Hello everyone, my name is Desi, and welcome back to the Wastelands and Trials of Kenshi. Last episode was a big day for us. We stormed the last base of the Holy Nation, and with blood, sweat, and tears, we defeated the remaining paladins and solidified the total defeat of the Holy Nation. Now, with this giant W, we can move on to new adventures, and my next goal in this playthrough, which was taking on the United Cities. The United Cities, or the Empire, is another giant, horrible, corrupted big. faction, which you can never have enough of in this post-apocalyptic world. Its main source of income and production is through the use of slaves. However, unlike the Holy Nation who try to rationalize their slavery, the United Cities gloat their use of them. Large slave farms are rampant through the eastern and southern parts of Kenshi, and slave mongers roam every corner of their territory, hunting down any unfortunate souls unlucky enough to cross paths with them. Taking on the United Cities would not be easy, for many reasons we will get into now. Firstly, the Empire has almost triple the territory of the Holy Nation, with cities spanning across half the map. They are also close allies with the Slave Traders and the Traders Guild, which basically means if you're making enemies out of one of these factions, you're making enemies with all of them. And finally, there's just the sheer quality difference in the United Cities military. United Cities Samurai wear Samurai Armor, which is arguably the strongest armor set in the game. And unlike the Holy Nation's shoddy chest plates, the United Cities have very high quality equipment. Almost all of the Empire's troops wear standard level gear or better, and are always armed with at least Katun grade weapons. They also have harpoon turrets, which are some of the most damaging weapons in the entire game. And I would know, as harpoon turrets absolutely shred through every single base assault that's ever came to my front door. And let me tell you, these samurai do not miss. And just to top it off with a nice little bow, the United Cities military is led by Igor, who is one of the strongest enemies of all of Kenshi. He is a large, angry, and rather stupid Southern Hiver who has joined the Empire for glory, money, or just for the fact that he can eat more babies. And additionally, he has one of the most dangerous base assaults in the entire game. So we had our work cut out for us. We weren't going to start with the United Cities though. In fact, we were going after one of their enemies, the Reavers. The Reavers are a bandit faction led by a man named Valamon. They are a group of extremists who believe they should rule over the Empire. Why? I, I don't know, because Valamon said so. They use slave warriors and are known for very brash attacks against the other local factions. The main reason I wanted to take out the Reavers first is so they didn't claim too much land while we were fighting the United Cities. It would be a pain if I defeated a city and then had to return just to destroy the Reavers there. Also, the Reavers were just a bunch of losers, so I thought it would be really funny to go kick them into the mud a little bit. The Sun Squad was sent out, the Reaver base was found in a giant abandoned factory known as the Ark, and with a nice little battle montage, the Reavers were destroyed. We really didn't need the entire Sun Squad for this fight against the Reavers, as they just weren't very tough at this stage of the game. They wear this unique hack stopper jacket, which you oddly cannot craft without mods. Not that you'd want to craft it though, because the stats of the hack jacket is piss poor. Now the main problem area is up here. 
all of this going on up here is what's causing me the most physical discomfort. It's like a visceral reaction of discontent coming from this area. This area is not good either. I hate this, but I'm mainly worried about this. Looking at Valamon's master crafted hack stopper jacket, it's worse than normal leather mercenary armor. So we'll just be keeping it for souvenir's sake. Uh, kinda sucks because I do really like the look of this armor, but it's just trash. There is literally no reason to wear this armor over other options, and you can't even craft it, so it's not like you could get good quality versions of it for your entire army, even if you wanted to. With Valamon gone, it was time to launch our attack against the Empire. I decided to start at the northern part of the map and work my way into the Great Desert. The Sun Squad was eager especially Hamut, as the man lost his wife to slavers and was itching for vengeance ever since he joined our faction. As we marched, I was a bit anxious about the coming war, and you may be asking me, Desi, why on this godforsaken moon do you need to fight the United Cities? Was the Holy Nation not enough for you? And my answer is, well, yeah. We don't need to destroy the Empire, they weren't the main villains of my character's story, but given how many lives the United Cities has ruined, I think it was justifiable. The fat, greasy nobles have been ruling at the top for so long and they've just been destroying the continent with their petty squabbles. Also, in this post-post-apocalyptic world, even New Sun weren't always the heroic good guys. In the roleplay, I think Rayuni believed that he could lead the moon of Kenshi to a brighter future. He is a anxious but ambitious Hive Prince. And Rayuni knew that the only thing stopping New Sun from solidifying their position as the new rulers of the continent would be the Empire. Arriving at Clown City, we took a breather and used our last moments as United City allies to get some food and supplies and mingle with the locals. Look how cute the scene is. It's not like we're gonna come back here in 15 minutes and butcher this place into a bloody mess. We went to Drifter's Last, stood in the middle of the city, and then I hit the big shiny button. The next war has begun. The samurai were better opponents compared to the holy paladins, but not by much. The biggest problem were the harpoon turrets. I poked in my butthole when I saw a samurai slap one of my sun squad members with a fat 68 damage attack. But after we got the gunners, the rest of the city fell easily. You see, while the samurai do have katan grade katanas, or better, katanas just aren't very good at defeating armored targets. And so even though they had higher quality gear, they were actually dealing less damage in melee than the Paladins, because Paladin Crosses have armor piercing. So in actuality, the Samurai were actually less efficient at dealing damage to us than the Paladins with their mid-grade salvaged weapons. Lady Marin, who was the noble of this city, got her face blasted and her bodyguard served as excellent punching bags for the Sun Squad. And just like that, the first city was down. We wandered back into the bar and killed some United City sympathizers while the locals just, uh, you know, pulled an American resident and ignored the obvious war crimes happening in front of them by just, uh, scrolling on Instagram. We built a skin peeler and introduced Lady Marin to the afterlife, and you may think, is that the end of this episode? No, my friends. This battle isn't over. Not by a long shot. We went to Clown Steady and fulfilled that promise of being back in 15 minutes. Press play on the combat music.
And then we hit up the Slaver Farm. And this fight wasn't even really a fight. The slavers have mediocre gear, so we just uh, curb stomped them. Grabbing the Slave Master, Sad Neil added another traumatic event to his deteriorating skeleton brain and uh, put the greasy noble in another skin peeler. And just like that, the south of the United Cities was done for. Yeah, pretty damn easy, right? We took some hits, sure, but this was not as difficult as I thought. So in the future, I'm kind of at a crossroads on what I want to do. I could increase the enemy squad size again and potentially break the game with giant squads of samurai. Maybe. But these fights are just too easy. I love how OP the Sun Squad has gotten, but you guys want content. And content is watching these characters fight for their lives, which they currently weren't doing because they were mopping the floor with everyone. The final stand of the Holy Nation was a great time, so in a desperate attempt to recapture that rush of fighting all those enemies, I may bump up the enemy squad size again. Just, just for funsies. But with that, the defeated Empire Cities were swapped to the control of the Free Traders, a neutral faction that could now live their lives without the slave-happy rule of the United Cities. All in a day's work of being the good guys of Kenshi, right? The Sun Squad approached Katon. This was the home of the Katon Scrap Masters, the best current weaponsmiths on Kenshi. Their weapons used by hundreds of people across the continent. We slaughtered the population inside this city. And we made enemies out of the tech hunters who desperately tried to protect the Katon Scrapmasters. We left Katon in ruins and the fishmen began to infest the area, much like the fogmen did to the Holy Nation's territory. It was at this point that Rayuni had a pause. In simply two days, half of the Empire had already fallen. Sure, the free traders were around and they were doing their best to rebuild civilization, but the morally good things that New Sun was doing to the continent may actually leave it in a worse state. It was at this point that Burn approached Rayuni and told him something. What is your plan after the Empire falls? Rayuni didn't have an answer. He was blinded, much like the great Tin Fist, on doing the morally right thing. This is the right path, of course. It's freeing the slaves, overthrowing tyrants, reinstating peace, prosperity. But as Rayuni looked around the continent, all he saw was more death. The Fogmen now infesting half the map with the Southern Hive Queen gone. The Fishmen now infiltrating the southern parts of Kenshi as well. And what would happen when the rest of the United Cities falls? The rebel farmers would take control? I hardly think they have the leadership to make a new stable empire. Rayuni didn't really have an answer. And then Burn told him something else. The Holy Nation was a necessary evil. Sure, their beliefs may be backwards in some ways, but they were right about one thing, and that is to fear skeletons. For there is one skeleton, one legendary skeleton, that has been waiting and plotting in the Ashlands. And the minute that the Empire falls and the last great civilization of the moon is destroyed, that skeleton will lead his legions to a new war. And the Holy Nation, the faction we thought was so evil, would turn out to be the only ones that could hold Mad Catlon back. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Kenshi. Another one for the books as we continue this story of New Sun and what they do on the moon of Kenshi. Thank you guys for the support. As always, you guys are awesome. Thank you for all the likes, all the comments, all the dislikes. It all means the world to me. Uh, and I will see you all in the next episode, whatever that episode may be. So take care, everyone, and have a good rest of your day. Bye!